Hello and energetic good morning to one and all. Let me start today with a quote. Once someone said that the problem is not the problem, but your attitude towards the problem is a problem. Did you understand anything? The problem is not the problem, but your attitude towards the problem is a problem. It means when you have a problem in your life, certainly as a life, there will be a number of problems. So when you have a problem, if you're thinking that, oh, it is such a great problem and I cannot solve it. So that will be a problem. But when you have a problem and you're thinking that it is not such a great problem I can solve, then it is not a problem. So actually the problem is not the problem, but your attitude towards the problem is a problem. Just keep it in your mind and let me wish you a nice day. So now let's move to our chapter. I hope that you remember well the best Christmas present in the world written by Michael Morpurgo. And I have some points here on the board and these points will help you to recall the story. Okay. So the best Christmas present in the world. And when the story started, we saw whom the writer Michael Morpurgo as the main character. And he got a roll top desk from an attic shop, isn't it? So he felt uh, curious about that desk and he bought it and he took home and he started repairing it. And the desk was damaged with fire and water because it was made before long use. And from that uh, desk, he got an envelope and a letter. And his curiosity forced him to open the letter. It was the letter written by Jim McPherson to his beloved wife, Connie McPherson. Isn't it? And Jim McPherson was a, a British soldier. And I told you in 1914, there was a war between British and German. At that time, a British soldier named Jim McPherson wrote a letter to his beloved wife, Connie McPherson, to tell, to share a beautiful, unforgettable experience with his wife. So that letter we just opened, I think, and we have started to read. Isn't it? So let us see what is going to happen and what the husband is sharing with his wife. Okay. And before that, let me tell you uh, the coming uh, pages in the coming days, we have to see two more words. It will repeat again and again. Fritz and Tommy. Okay. Fritz means a name for a German soldier, a common name. Not a real name, but a common name. Usually we call a German soldier Fritz. So if you, if they do not know the names, the real names, they call Fritz. And Tommy means a British name for a soldier. A British soldier's name is called Tommy. Okay. So these two names will come again and again in your story. I think you read the story well and you understood. And today we are going to start with the page number 11. Okay, 11, second paragraph. So the last class we saw, he opened the envelope and started reading and he told my dear wife, I would like to tell you about a Christmas morning, the best Christmas morning I have ever had. So that is what he was sharing. Okay, and I told you, do you remember when the story starts, our uh, gym was in a trench, trench in the last class. I couldn't show you the picture. Actually, this is... A trench can you see this is a trench where the soldiers stands this gap is called a trench they are safe here the enemies cannot attack them directly so this is trench clear so when they were in the trench our story starts ready so please take your book and follow me when I read page number 11 second paragraph I should like to be able to tell you that we began it. My dear wife, let me tell you, actually, we began it. We means the British soldiers began it. It means what? Let's see. But the truth I am ashamed to say is that Fritz began it. Uh, he told us that actually we began it. 
then later he saw it is ashamed to tell you actually we didn't begin begin it actually the fritz the german soldiers began it it means what let's see first someone saw a white flag waving from the trenches opposite see our uh, british soldiers including our jing mac person was staying there in the trench from the opposite trench means opposite border from the opposite country from the trench somebody showed a white flag okay so what is the symbol of a white flag a peace no war not anger not angry and no fights peace 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 and love that was showing by a white flag and then they were calling out to us from the across no man's land happy christmas tommy happy christmas so and they shoved a white flag and they started calling what they were calling happy christmas tommy they were calling louder happy christmas tommy tommy means british soldiers all the british soldiers happy christmas who was wishing the german soldiers and from the no man's land no man's land what you know if you are taking page number 13 just turn a page and you can see a football match and where they are playing the football is called no man's land because not uh, uh, from the part of british and not from the part of german there is a gap in the border that border is called no man's land so they were calling from there then when we had got over the surprise some of us shouted back we got surprised from a wish and we also replied back what same to you fred same to you so the british people also wished back same to you happy christmas they also cried aloud i thought that would be that means what i thought that would be that means i thought that over everything is over just a wish everybody just wished each other that's all i thought but something more happened what is that <coughs> we all did but then suddenly one of them was up there in his gray gray coat and waving a white flag and someone came out with a gray coat means their uniform with a white flag white flag i told you peace don't shoot we are friends so by showing a white flag a person came out don't shoot lads someone shouted from there someone shouted don't shoot don't shoot lads lads means boys friends don't shoot and no one did and we didn't shoot then there was another fritz upon the parapet another so the german soldiers the fritz are coming one by one from their side kept your heads down i told the man it is a trick so where i where are they they are in the trench they are holding their head down so our tommy said to everyone it is their trick germans are playing a game be careful they will kill us so keep our heads down he thought first but it wasn't but it was not a trick it was real they were asking for friendship they were wishing us and they were showing a white flag it was true they need a company second paragraph one of the germans was waving a bottle above his head it is a christmas day tommy so one of the german was showing a bottle bottle a bottle of alcohol a bottle of alcohol and they were showing this is a christmas day so my dear friend this is a christmas day come let us celebrate with alcohol alcohol is here just come he called and we have uh, schnapps schnapps means a type of drinks okay drinks alcoholic drinks so we have means the british also have water schnapps and we have sausage sausage means is a food item usually made by let me show you made by meat okay meat of uh, pork beef and all they just made with this is called uh, sausage okay uh, a yummy food it is actually so that's it so we have uh, some uh, snacks means a drink and we have sausage we meet you yes 
by this time there were a dozen of them walking towards us across no man's land and not a rifle between them a dozen of a number of soldiers are coming to us and they didn't have even a rifle rifle means a gun they didn't have so truly they are coming for making friendship where in the war field little private morris one of the soldier okay he is one of the soldier little private morris was the first up he was the first person and come on boys what are we waiting for so he came and called her come on boys what are you waiting for and then there was no stopping them it was the officer okay he was the officer and i should have stopped them there are then i suppose but the truth is that it never even occurred to me i should why you know all along their line and hours i could see men walking slowly towards one another gray coats khaki coats meeting in the middle so from each sides all the soldiers are coming one by one in the no man's land gray coats are there khaki coats are there means two uniforms are joining together means two soldiers two groups of soldiers are coming together in the no man's land means in the border means the two opposite means the two enemies are joining together in the christmas day and i was one of them so my dear wife my dear coni i am happy to tell you i was one of them and i was part of this in the middle of the war we were making peace underline the sentence what a beautiful sentence it is what a meaningful sentence it is please underline uh, in the middle of the war we were making peace so it is the condition is two wars the war between two countries german and british is going on and in the middle of the war we were making peace love friendship care so can you imagine such a situation so that is why tommy was sorry jim was too much excited to share this incident to his wife then last paragraph you cannot imagine to rest coney my feelings as i looked into my eyes on fritz of fisa who approached me hand outstretched so what happened you cannot imagine to rest coney my dear wife you cannot imagine i cannot explain what my feelings when as i looked into the eyes of a fritz of fisa when i looked into the eyes of a german officer what a feeling i had you cannot imagine that i that much happy i was who approached me he came to me and hand outstretched hands wolf he gave a shake hand and he told his name german soldier came and his name was hands wolf he said gripping my hand warmly and holding it he held he was holding my hand and said my name is hand wolf i am from dazel Dorf. I'm from Dusseldorf, and he shared his plays also. I play the cello in the orchestra. Actually, I was not a real what uh, an army officer. I came here uh, to be a part of this war. Actually, what I was doing, you know, I was playing cello, cello in an orchestra in a music troupe. Cello means, you know, what it is. Cello is a a type of musical instrument just as like a violin but not a small violin a huge one can you see this violin is as large as this lady so this is called a cello okay yeah so what he was doing before hans wolf was doing he was playing cello in the orchestra happy christmas who told hans wolf who is that hans wolf a german soldier german officer said then our jim also replied captain jim macpherson i replied he also replied my name is jim macpherson captain jim macpherson i replied and a happy christmas to you too i am a school teacher from dorset in of the in the west of england actually i am from dorset and i am a school teacher so nice to meet you both of them shook their hands happily Oh, Dorset! He smiled. I know this place. I know it very well. I know Dorset 
what a beautiful place every time i'm telling you dorset 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 isn't it so let me share the beauty of the dorset with you see can you imagine how beautiful this city will be so this is called dorset it is just a part it's a part of dorset okay such a beautiful place it is so he told that who told the german soldier told that oh dorset I know very well. I know your place. We shared my rum ration and his excellent sausage. Okay, so they shared their rum. Rum means alcohol drinks. They shared and the excellent sausage also. Sausage, I told you, I showed you the picture. So they shared food and drinks each other. What they used to share, you know bullets bullets from their guns before they were used to share bullets on their guns they were shouting they were calling they were fighting they were shooting but now they are sharing peace love food and drinks how beautiful it is then and we talked connie how we talked my dear connie you know how we talked he spoke almost perfect fact english he was a german person even though he spoke nice english but it turned out that he had never set foot in dorset never even been to england but he didn't come to england he didn't touch in his uh, foot on dorset even though he spoke nice english how you know he had learned all he knew of england from school and from reading books in english he learned our language from his school and he used to learn a lot of english books so that's why he speaks nice english here we have to think one thing we read english books we read hindi books but are we able to speak english are we able to speak hindi no why that we should think seriously anyway here he says he used to read a lot of books so he speaks nice english then what happened <coughs> his favorite writer was thomas hardy thomas hardy is it familiar for you or not i don't know thomas hardy is one of the best writer in english literature and his favorite book far from the madding crowd it is one of the book written by thomas hardy so out there in no man's land we talked of uh, uh, Bathsheba and Gabriel Oak and Surgeon Troy and Dorset. So we dis they discussed about different types of books, characters and about literature also. Then what happened? He had a wife and a son born just six months ago. How pathetic can you imagine? He had a six Oh, sorry he had a, a son who born six months ago small child so actually he didn't come to the war for himself but but he forced it to no other way so he came uh, for the war without uh, getting enough time to enjoy with uh, his small child small baby but he came then as i looked about me there were huddles of khaki and gray everywhere all over no man's land smoking laughing talking drinking eating a huddles of huddles means a group of both uniforms are there means when the two officers two captains me and hall salt means our jim and hans wolf were talking and sharing happiness when we looked there all the soldiers from german and from britain both of them were enjoying themselves how you know they were smoking smoking laughing talking drinking eating what to say happy 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 everywhere hans wolf and share hans wolf and i shared what was left of our wonderful christmas cake connie connie my dear wife made a cake for me okay so i shared the cake with the person with hans wolf he thought the marzipan was the best he had ever tasted marzipan means in the left side you can see a sweet covering on the cake so i would like to show you the picture this is called marzipan that you might have seen even in pictures maybe not in pictures in real life also you might have seen i think so this is called marzipan 
and this was the comment after eating the cake what Hansel commented you know he commented that and uh, what was you know uh, he thought the marzipan was the best he had ever tasted this was the mess best cake best marzipan I have ever tasted and I agreed <laughs> why i cannot agree on or how can i cannot agree because the the food is cooked by my wife my dearest wife so it is the best i also support it we agreed about everything and we agreed what all the things we shared it is we were agreeing each other and he was my enemy he was did you listen to the word w a s he was my enemy not is there never was a Christmas party like it, Connie. My dear Connie, I haven't witnessed, I haven't participated such a beautiful party, Christmas party in my life. So this is the best one I have ever participated. Next paragraph. Then someone, I don't know who, brought out a food ball. Ah, so they are not uh, satisfied with the drinking, eating, talking and all. They are going to play a game. So somebody, I don't know who it is, one of the soldiers brought a food ball. Grey coats were dumped in piles to make gold post. So they were dumped, it means they were sitting in the corner and they started making gold post. Two gold posts are ready. And the next thing we knew, it was Tommy against Fritz. Out in the middle of no man's land. Then I understood it is a game going to happen between Fritz and Tommy. A football match between Fritz and Tommy. What do you think who will win? The British or the German? So if one country wins, what will happen? Is there any chance for another war, another fight, enmity? What do you think? Let's see. Anyway, they start their game. In the right side in the picture you can say they are playing football in the no man's land means in the border okay let's see then hans wolf and i looked on and cheered clapping our hands and stamping our feet to keep our cold as much as anything so we started cheering up and clapping up up very good you're playing nicely come on so such a way they started we started cheering up clapping our hands and stamping our feet come on come on and we were enjoying the game there was a moment when i noticed out breeds mingles in the air between us between the two country soldiers our air is mingling air means the breath is mingling each other means that much close they are no enmity no hatred no war just peace love friendship and care that's it so that is what i noticed then what happened let's see he saw it too and i smile and smiled jing macpherson he said after a while i think this is how we should resolve this war a football match no one dies in the football match no children are orphaned and no wives become widows Please underline those lines also, my dear children. How nicely he said, my dear Jim MacPherson, who is saying, uh, our Hans Wolf, German soldier is saying, my dear uh, Jim. What he said, he said after that, I think this is how we should resolve a war. We should solve a war. This is the best way to compromise a war, a solve a war. And not fighting with, uh, shooting with gun and all, using bomb and all. It is not the way. This is the best way to solve a problem. A game, a happy, friendly game. Then. And what is the uh, advantage, you know? You have to underline a football match. No one dies in football match. True. No children are orphaned. Orphan means a child who loves his father and mother because nobody will die so none of the children will be orphaned and no wives become widows widow means a lady a wife whose husband just passed away okay so no, nothing harm will happen to anybody if we are resolving all the problems through a game who said who said hands wall to whom to jing macpherson next para i would prefer cricket I told him. Then we 
uh, Tommy's could be sure of winning probably. Then I said, I means what? Who? Who it is? It is our gym said, I prefer cricket actually. Why you know? Uh -huh. They are going to lose the match. Who? Tommy's. Our, uh, 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 what? Tommy's, our British rulers means, British soldiers means gym is going to, uh, gym man team is going to lose the match. So he thought that, uh, I prefer cricket actually, he told. We laughed at that and together we watched the game. Sad to say, Connie Fritz won 2 to 1 goal. Who won? Fritz, German, they won. But as hands of generosity said, see, when they won, what we expect, uh, they will say that, see, that is our strength, our power, our soldiers are excellent. And what kind of soldiers you have, that they would say. But it didn't happen. What was it said, you know, what they said, you know, he generously said, our goal was wider than theirs. So it wasn't quite fair. That's why our goal was wider. Actually, you also, there is a possibility for you also to win. Okay, so by chance we want that. So anyway, we are good friends. Then the time came and all too soon when the game was finished, the schnapps and the rum and the sausage had long since run out. Run out means finished. So the game finished, our food, drinks, everything got finished. Our party is going to get over. And we knew it was all over. I wished Hans well and told him I hoped he would see his family again soon. So when we separated, I wished him, uh, let the God bless you, may the God bless you to go home and see your family again. Because this is the life of a soldier. At any time, anything may happen. Even he may lose his life. So I wished that the fighting would end and we could all go home not only for you the war should get end soon and we all want to go home back i think that is what the every soldier want on both sides and for said and so said you are right absolutely right the both soldiers want the same thing when it is over we can go home and see my family everybody is thinking so I shall never forget this moment, nor you. He saluted and walked away from slowly, unwillingly. I felt. Okay? So he saluted because he respect. Even it is an opposite party, opposite country, opposite enemies they were. But they saluted. Means respect and love. And they separated. And how he went, you know, slowly, unwillingly. Means he is not interested to go. But no way. So he continued going. He turned to wave just once and then became one of the hundreds of grey coated men drifting back towards their trenches. So everybody when they left, they shoved, they waved their hands. Bye, bye, goodbye. Last paragraph. That night back in our dog, uh, dogouts. Dugouts means a shelter for soldiers made by digging a hole means for their safety like a trench they were also staying in a hole which they made in the mud and he heard them singing carol and singing it quietly and beautifully they were singing carol songs christmas carol songs beautifully it was still a nest silent night means it is the name of their song and our boys gave them a rousing Chorus. Rousing means what you know, an active and energetic chorus also of while shepherds watched. This is the name of whose song? Tommy's song. We exchanged the carols for a while and then we all fell silent. So at that night, each of us shared our songs, our carol songs happily and silence everywhere. We had had our time of peace and goodwill, a time I will treasure as long as I live. So my dear wife, Connie, a treasure for me this moment. I will never forget. And this is the best Christmas moments that I have ever experienced in my life. Okay. So he just shared through his letter. Jim shared one of his best Christmas experience when he was in the war field. And who shared peace and happiness with the enemies on a Christmas day. That is what he shared to his wife. Now there are a number of questions in your mind, I'm sure. What are they? 
yeah first thing is then what happened to our our gene is he alive dead or something happened and what happened to the wife koni where is she and how this letter came into this roll top desk and what happened to the desk when it is burned and uh, damaged so a lot of questions are there a lot of surprises are there suspenses are there so just wait curiously for the coming classes okay so what you want to do is just uh, try to write a small paragraph about the importance of avoiding war okay and the importance of peace write a small paragraph which shows your uh, your opinion about avoiding war stopping wars and giving importance to peace and love okay and try to give a small a nice heading too so that's all for today read your text well and if there is any doubt just ask me thank you have a nice day bye